today I'm going to talk to you about context collapse, which is the thing that I am bad at discussing succinctly. Also, most things are things that I am bad at discussing succinctly. I posted a video about context collapse years ago when I was in grad school and I was doing Vita and I came home late and drunk and I knew that I needed to make a video and so I just babbled about something that I had been thinking about a lot. And lately I have been very tongue-tied about this whole process until I remembered the somewhat obvious fact that it's good to just talk about the things that you can't stop thinking about. So. Context collapse. I first encountered the term from Michael Wesh, but I've been told that it was Dana Boyd's term first. She's got a blog post about this that I will link to in the description if you're interested in that kind of thing. Context collapse is a concept that describes the somewhat strange phenomenon, except that it's not that strange anymore because the internet and social media are ubiquitous and permeate all of our lives all the time, always. Uh, but the concept whereby you are talking on the internet and the audience or context for the things that you are saying is ambiguous. I'm gonna quote Wesh here because his initial usage of the term was YouTube-centric, whereas Boyd was discussing Twitter, and I am here on YouTube talking to you about this particular kind of context collapse. Now look carefully at a webcam. That's there. That's somewhere else. That could be anybody. On the other side of that little glass lens is almost everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you have ever heard of, and even those you have never heard of. He continues, the problem is not a lack of context, it is context collapse. An infinite number of contexts collapsing upon one another into that single moment of recording. I've been thinking about this a lot in part because we are about to upload the teaser for Crash Course Sociology, and that scares me in a way that is hard for me to articulate it presents a rather significant unknown. I have long chosen to resolve this by thinking of it as just me talking to my friends, partially because settling on some sense of who is necessary for me, but also because that is what makes it the most fulfilling and enjoyable for me. I spent the last couple months, I guess, obsessing over how and whether that might change, or I guess actually it's been amplified in the last couple months because really I've been thinking about this ever since I started this job. Even before I came here, I had been doing and making things on the internet such that there were definitely already people with whom I had one-way communication. In that sense, it wasn't just my friends, but even those people sort of still felt like my very silent friends, I guess. This is obviously in large part owed to an audience size thing, but it's also because the only way that anyone could have entered into that one-way communication is by coming upon existing public communication with my friends. Snark Squad, for example, has always structurally been friends talking back and forth at one another, albeit in written format, so any point of entry was always rooted in existing conversations with friends. Which is to say that even new, unknown people didn't ever require me to rethink the approach of conversations with friends. Moving here was the first time that I did have to kind of rethink that because there were people who were following me on social media because of my proximity to someone else, which was weird for me. Not weird for people to do that, I get that impulse, but weird for me to be on this side of it. Weird for me to be the one effectively entering into another set of friends' conversations, if that makes sense. Weird because it added a new layer of context to what I was saying and doing on the internet, and that required a period of adjustment for me. And I guess that's also part of what is nerve-wracking about this new thing, because I feel a responsibility to this other thing that I value and that I care about, but I also care about and value this space where I'm talking to my friends. Of course, all of this is kind of silly and unproductive because it is an unknown. All of this is an anxiety about an unknown and no amount of obsessing will make it known. There's this other bit from Wesh that I really like. The webcam forces the blogger to imagine a virtually infinite number of possible others, potential futures, and different contexts, each of which bear different perspectives and judgments on his or her self. He goes on about this as a source of conflict and paralysis as all of those me's come into conflict and the eye freezes. But there is also something kind of cool and encouraging and hopeful in that idea as well. There's the very real anxiety about the negative unknowns, but there are a great many positive possibilities as well, and that is exciting. I could talk about this forever, but I am gonna cut myself off now because I can already tell that this is gonna suck to edit. As always, my great hope is that this is just one beat in a larger conversation, so I would love to hear how you think about and consider the virtually infinite number of possible others, potential futures, and different contexts, or if you even think about this at all. Let me know in the comments below. Bye!